Folks, we've made it to a big one. We've weathered quite a storm through seven seasons of normal Baywatch and two seasons of Mitch's X-Files adventures. But from the clouds has emerged a beautiful rainbow. Stephanie's gonna die! We've been foreshadowing this for forever, and now the time has come. See, you thought she was gonna die of that Emmy cancer they gave her during the WCW Hulk Hogan episode, but then they swerved on ya. Stephanie is too much of a badass for cancer to snatch her from this mortal coil. Plus, they already did that with Mitch's other girlfriend, so they gotta change it up slightly. This was actually a pretty big deal at the time, as it's one of only two major character deaths they ever did. I mean, that was clearly stated anyway. There are a couple later on I'm not really sure about, to be honest. The other major death was Jill, and while hilarious, we'd known her for one season and she was barely a character. Stephanie, on the other hand, the audience had kinda gotten to know and like, so it meant a little more. You know that it did, because she was one of the few characters to get an exit even written in instead of disappearing unceremoniously. There's some fascinating details behind Alexandra Paul's departure as well, but I'm gonna leave that for the end of the video. For now, let's take the chance of a lifetime! Which is the name of this boat? But if you peel the letters away, you'll see the original name, The Saint Actually. This can't be real. This can't be happening. It all started out so perfect. Happy birthday, loser! Yeah, 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 yeah. I love birthdays because I'm another year older and I'll be able to boss you around for another 100 years because I'm never gonna die. No, that's right, and I'll be able to whine at you for an eternity. <laughs> so Caroline is planning a surprise party for Stephanie, which she knows about and doesn't want. The script I have includes extended dialogue from this scene where Caroline says that it's Stephanie's 30th birthday and she always had a dream to be married to the perfect man before she turned 30. And everything is so perfectly perfect now, just so wonderfully perfect, and oh how perfect her life will always be. I'm assuming they cut this dialogue because they said their dad died in Vietnam when Stephanie was seven, and if you do the math from 30, then that means he died after the US pulled out of Vietnam, and their otherwise consistent backstory would be shattered or for time. Also explained in this cut dialogue is that Stephanie and Tom have received a yacht as a wedding present. From who, it's never explained. But said yacht is going to be used in this episode for a field trip to teach kids in the lifeguard water program about sailing. It was Tom's idea, since he's a doctor not involved with the lifeguard water program. All of this was cut, presumably, because the only thing it adds to this episode is questions. And I don't know where else to add this, but the original title for the episode was Shockwaves. You know, like the hair care product that sponsored season six. Field trip time! Alongside Stephanie, Tom, Mitch, and I don't know, pick a name out of a hat, uh, Neely, the kids that will be aboard the SS Let's Kill Stephanie are Nerdy Kid, Shy Girl, Fighting Stepbrothers, and the rest. Well, they're just sailing out to the middle of nowhere with Sea Witch Neely on board. I'm sure nothing bad is gonna happen. <laughs> <laughs> I defeated a serial killer ghost last week. See ya! Save some actuallys for me! Have fun living! Buck, buck! I'm a dolphin! My plot also relates to a dog. Hey, champ! Heard you miss your dead dog and your dead parents. Yeah, I can relate. I've killed a few dogs in my time. But one thing I can tell you is that when one dog dies, there's always another to take its place. Meaning my work is never done. Anyway, did you know that the ozone layer is gonna collapse and we're all gonna burn to death in two years? Except for the few survivors, of course. They'll pray for death every day, if they can keep track of them. Because the fires will create a perpetual blaze that will rid us of night forever. Yes, truly, nights will never be the same. Well, glad we had this talk. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Living is great. We don't think living is so great. Yeah, we hate that. <laughs> Stephanie's gonna die. Pass it on. What was that? Nothing. Mind your own business. <laughs> Time to summon a storm. Now, now, let's not panic. They have a lot of lifeguard friends back home that'll be looking for them. They're in safe hands. Yes, that's right. I want two beef and cheddars, a French dip, a large curly fry, and... No, beef and cheddars! Right, and do you still have the five for five menu? I'm gonna need like six of those. Mmm, better get a diet soda with that. And this party is gonna be so great! Everyone's gonna be thinking about me because of what a fabulous job I did! Nothing Stephanie does is gonna overshadow me today! I ordered a bunch of Arby's and accidentally forgot to save Stephanie. Is that okay? Now 
remember, if you get into trouble, use Stephanie as a shield. You got it? All right, group check. Nerd, you still nerdin'? Good. Shy girl, still shy? All right. Another one? Uh, still here, I guess. Okay, everyone, prepare for trauma. Neely, I'm scared. Not to worry. In most scenarios like this, the nerd is the first to go, so you won't have to watch all of your friends die in front of you. <laughs> And since you don't have main character protection status, you're probably next, FYI. <laughs> the model ship can't take that much more, Mitch. We're gonna make it, damn it! I have so many more adventures to be bored by! And that's my save, and my save, and my save. Hmm, am I missing anybody? My save! <laughs> no! You're not gonna steal my save, Stephanie! Not my save! Ow, 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 ow. I win, Mitch. Ow, 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 ow. And then she had me here to protection status. She did this on purpose. Total power move. <laughs> Suck it. You can't die now. I have so many more actuallys to give you. I'll always be with you. Everywhere you look. Everywhere you go, there's a heart. A heart and a hand to hold on to. <laughs> Standing tall on the wings of my dream. I love me. <laughs> but you were my save. Ah, Stephanie went out with the two men she loved the most. The guy who missed her wedding to go catch a jellyfish, and her husband who she thought was just okay. Also, he was Mitch's best friend for almost his entire life. I think that was a line they threw out there once. Anyway, we're never going to see him again after this episode. Caroline, it's too late. The only party we'll be having now is at her funeral. No! No, no, no! Stephanie, you want to do this to me? I was supposed to have a clue that you! I'll kill you again! <laughs> I must say, I am impressed with the devastation coming from one ledge muscleman, robbed of the Emmy Baywatch deserved. Um, can you just write me out in a Phantom of the Opera episode or something? You son of a bitch! Barely any main characters could come to Stephanie's funeral, so I got a front row seat. Sad, huh? Check one off the Deborah Schwartz bingo card, though. Today, we're here to remember the life of a total pain in the ass. For so many years, Stephanie has been a thorn in my side. Now she's returned to the hell from when she came. Please feel free to remember her with any clips you see fit. And if you didn't have a lot of screen time, just use a shot of you walking past her or something. Hobie's with his mother. Thank you. R.I.P. me. I was the best of us. And Mitch has another one to add to his dead girlfriend shelf. The end. Anyway, we'll be seeing Stephanie again on Baywatch Nights as a favor to Hasselhoff. Spoilers if you care. So, um, Alexandra Paul wanted out. Yeah, so, uh, here's the story. Baywatch was pretty cheap, even for the bigger name actors. Alexandra Paul mentioned in E! True Hollywood Story that a friend of hers working on Melrose Place was making 10 times her salary. But it was a convenient work situation. It was on the beach, not far from where she lived, and she was only working five months of the year. But eventually, you gotta get tired after five years of this, on top of the pervasive culture focused on a certain body image. I've mentioned this story before, but it's worth repeating. One of the producers came up to her and told her she should get breast implants. And I did have one of the producers come up to me and put up a, a Playboy um, in front of me with a picture of uh, a model who had had a, a breast job. She'd had breast implants that weren't that large, and he said to me, um, these would look great on you. Even the nicest person can only take so much, and I think she just reached a point where she wanted to move on. And five years is a pretty good lifespan for anyone on Baywatch who isn't Hasselhoff, so no one could say she hadn't run the whole gauntlet. And so, for her exit, she pleaded for them to please kill her off, thanks. <laughs> I begged. I said, kill, kill me, kill me, because then, um, It'll be really dramatic. And kill her they did, in an amazingly spectacular fashion. And to top it all off, she sat in on her own funeral scene in a blonde wig with huge boobs. Finally the woman the producers always wanted her to be. What a legend. Full disclosure here, I did kinda tear up when Caroline saw her sister's body. 
I'm gonna really miss Stephanie, because as much as I joke around about the character, she kicks some ass and was fun to watch. And I think Alexandra Paul genuinely seems like one of the kindest people. So here's to Stephanie. She died as she lived, sticking it to Mitch and crushed under a giant mast. Rest in peace. Next time on Baywatch Nights, Unfrozen Vikings! Did you know Mitch is an expert on that sort of thing? Apparently he is. Valhalla!